seated. Katie Casey was baseball man. She had the fever and she had it then. Just to root for the hometown crew. Every cent that Katie spent. On Saturday, her young beau called to see if she'd like to go to see a show. But Miss Kate said no. I'll tell you what you can do. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. I don't care if I ever get back, cause it's root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. Cause it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Katie Casey saw all the games, knew all the players by their names told the umpire he was wrong all along and she was strong when the score was two to two katie casey she had the clue to cheer on the boy she knew just what to do she made everyone sing the song take me out to the ball game take me Some peanuts and cracker jacks. I do not care if I ever get back, cause it's root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. Cause it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Take me out to the ball. Sherry, I thank you for being here today. Your presence is a wonderful sign of your love and your care for them, and they're grateful that you're here. Wilsey was born July the 6th, 1929, in his parents' home in Needmore, Texas, to N.C. and Sammy Cunningham Moore. He married his high school sweetheart and best friend, Mary Arnold, at home plate in Bell Baseball Park in Clovis, New Mexico, June the 23rd, 1948. He passed away at 92 years of age in Milshu, Texas on September the 25th, 2021. Wilsey attended Longview Elementary School and graduated from Milshu High School. He signed a professional baseball contract in 1948 to play in the West Texas, New Mexico League. It was Class B for three years. He was then sold to the Dallas Eagles of the Texas League in 1951. Wilsey played for two years in the Big State League, Class B for Dallas Forum Clubs in Gainesville and Longview, Texas. He was called up to Dallas in June of 1952 and played there until 1957. In 1958, Wilsey was sold to Portland, Oregon, known as from the Chicago Cubs farm team. And later in 1958, he was sold to Rochester, New York, a Triple A division of the St. Louis Cardinals, and then translated to the Triple A club in Houston. Wilsey retired from pro baseball in 1959. He came home to Milshu and worked for the Union Compress from 1952 until 1962. And then he worked for Milshu Co-op Gins and worked there until 1968. Wilsey took over the family farm operations in 1968 and retired from farming in 2000. He was a faithful member of First Baptist Church. Wilsey was preceded in death by his parents, N.C. and Sammy, and his brother, Don. Wilsey survived today by his wife, Mary, his two daughters, 
two daughters, Dana Davis and her husband Jay, and they live in Irving. Sherry Barrett and her husband Ronnie, who live here in Milshew. His sister, Frances Simmons, who lives in Dripping Springs. His three grandchildren, Ronnie Gail Hamilton and her husband Jamie, they live in Middle Lothian. Brooke Barrett and her fiance, Kellen Kaiser, Kelly Kaiser, and they live in Lebelan. Jason and his wife, Summer, and they live in Lubbock. His five great grandchildren, Taylor Hamilton, Ludwig, and her husband, Mark, Barrett Hamilton, Kelsey, Kelsey Barrett, and Jordan Barrett, Hayden Barrett, and several nieces and nephews, including Donna Black, Tom Glass, and Jerry Glass. We read from David's 23rd Psalm The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Let's pray together. Father, we've gathered as family and friends of Wilsey and Mary's to, to give thanks. We give you thanks for Wilsey, for his, his wonderful life, his disposition, his love for his family, his love for this area of Texas and this land. And Lord, we are grateful for his witness of faith and holding on to the promises of Jesus Christ, his Lord and his Savior. And Lord, in this uh, time of memorial, we ask that your spirit give us comfort and strength, encourage us along the way as we tell stories and sing of your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. away, Jesus my Savior I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend, he met the need of my heart. Shadows are spelling with joy I am telling, he made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, made me whole, my sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. Born of the Spirit, we fly from above into God's family divine. Justified fully through Calvary's love, oh, what a standing is mine. And the transaction so quickly was made when as a sinner I came. Took of the offer of grace he did proffer, he saved me, oh, praise his dear name. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, made me whole, my sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. Now I the hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure, there in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross.
cross I believe Rich is eternal and blessing supernal From His precious hand I receive Heaven came down and glory filled my soul Filled my soul When at the cross the Savior made me whole Made me whole My sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. Thank you, Maggie and Curtis and Ann. Thank you for playing for us today. In the fall of 1999, I, I wrote two letters. One to Helen Grigsby, the principal at Dillman Elementary, and the second to Barbara Finney, the principal at DeShazo. And the principals received the same letter. I just swapped my boys' names out for the appropriate principal. But here's my letter, dated September the 29th, 1999, which 22 years ago, which doesn't seem possible. I said, Dear Miss Finney, over the weekend I noticed that Timothy was a bit sluggish and lethargic. After examining him closely, I discover that he is suffering from sensory deprivation. I have prescribed a strict regime of sensory exposure in the effort to give him a bit of relief from his condition. I believe the sight of green grass, the smell of hot dogs, hearing the crack of the bat, feeling sunshine upon his little face, and tasting a precisely salted peanut might do wonders for his disposition. I also believe it is important that he experience an environment where he can yell Wando and Pudge without becoming a social outcast. Therefore, my prescription for his condition is a day at the ballpark in Arlington this Thursday when the Seattle Mariners play the Texas Rangers. And please note, this is a doctor's excuse. I hope he will be given the same consideration as a child suffering from meningitis or some other minor ailment. Sincerely, Dr. Stacy Connor. Now, on the Sunday before that Thursday trip, which was the last day of the Major League season, I mentioned to Wilsey our plans. So he called on Wednesday morning, and he asked if I'd bring the boys by after school. So after school, we went by, and Mary had cookies, and uh, if you would put that picture up for me, Abby. Mary had cookies on the counter and milk in the glasses, and Wilsey had stories. And he told them of his uncle, who played um, who, by the same name, who pitched for the 1927 Yankees, which was considered to be the finest baseball team ever assembled. He told them stories of spring training and playing ball in Dallas and Portland and Rochester, New York. He told them about playing with Bob Gibson and Willie McCovey. But he told them this story about Bob Gibson. He said Bob Gibson was, we only, he said we only played a year together and Bob Gibson was mean and he was strong and one day he got in a pickle and the manager came out of the dugout to talk to him on the mound and as the manager walked toward the mound, Bob Gibson walked off the mound and toward the dugout and they met at the first baseline and Bob Gibson said to that manager, you get in that dugout and you manage and I'll pitch. And Timothy said, so what did the manager do? And Wilsey said, well, he, he walked back into the dugout. <laughs> and I said, don't you be getting any big ideas. <laughs> but after they had eaten all the cookies and the milk was put away, Wilsey took them into his memorabilia room or his home office and showed them photos and bats and filled them with one story after another. And at the end of the session, he gave them each a picture that's, that's time-stamped on the margin, June 1956, and signed each one on the back. Now, I think at looking at these, I think Mary wrote the message and Wilsey wrote the signature. <laughs> but both of them say, have a great day tomorrow at the ball game. And um, Wilsey's career in baseball started before he was born. It was in his blood. His uncle, as I mentioned, played for the Yankees. His father, 
tried out for the Yankees, but he had suffered through a tooth ailment early in his life, which set up an infection in his shoulder, which ruined his pitching arm, and he did not make the club. Wilsey's career began on the sandlots around Needmore, and in one of those sandlot games, the elementary school from Longview was playing the elementary school, I believe from Baileyboro, in a softball game. Wilsey's playing center field, and a young girl gets a hit and runs the first base, and she, she is the prettiest thing he has ever seen in his life. He didn't know her name. He didn't meet her that day, but he memorized the face. And they didn't learn of each other until they both moved into Muleshoe to go to junior high and to high school. When Wilsey was 16 years old, he began driving a school bus for MISD. Now, I don't know if you want to run this by the school's liability policy or not, <laughs> but he would drive the bus in the mornings and pick up the kids on the southern side, the southern part of the route, and he said once he picked up the SEAL kids and stopped by Ralph and Naomi Blacks, the bus was full, and he drove on into Milshoe. They went to school for the day, and then after football practice or ball practice, he would drive that route back home and park the bus at home until the next, the next morning. After graduation, as we said earlier, um, Wilson signed a contract to play baseball in Clovis. And it was on that field in Clovis when he married the young lady that he'd seen running from home plate at first base. It reminded me of a verse, and Jesus said, Have you not read that the one who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore what God has joined together... Let no one separate. Mary remembers that evening, standing between the bleachers in her wedding dress, waiting for the game to end because she didn't want to sit on one of those wooden bleachers and mess up her dress, and nobody had a chair. So she and her dad stood between those bleachers until the game was over, and then they married. They fell in love in a ballpark in Needmore, and Mary was Wilsey's most prized possession his whole life. In private moments, when we were talking baseball, Wilsey would say, Mary made so many sacrifices so I could keep playing ball. Said she had load up those two little girls and drive across the country by herself to be wherever I happened to be playing at the time. These two girls remember starting the school in Millsview and finishing the year at spring training in Florida. Dana, for having been forgot one day at school, the principal left, teachers left, janitor locked up the building. She's still there. She thinks to herself, well, maybe Sherry and Mama are at the beach. So she walks across the highway over to the beach and wanders up and down the beach trying to find her mom and her sister, which she did not find. Finally, they, uh, they showed up and picked her up. Now, there is a pattern here. They left her at a ball game in Dallas one night. She was out playing on the field with all the other kids who got left by ballplayer families that evening when Wilson came back to get her. So there's, you know, something is going on here, but... I don't know if you all noticed or not, but Gil Robert posted an interview with your folks just after they got back from New York. It's on his website. It's about an hour long, and, and uh, I had a chance to watch that. And Wilson uses the same language that you all have used in this obituary. He was bought and he was sold. Now, you've got to remember that Wilson played before Kurt Flood. Kurt Flood, who stood up against Major League Baseball and initiated free agency. You were literally owned by the team. And he says things like, I was sold to the Cubs, and then the Cubs sold me to the Lubbock Hubbers. And, and he talks about his best year. It was, 19, it was when he played for the Lubbock Hubbers. He batted 370, hit 117 RBIs and 23 home runs. And he laughs to say, I struck out 100 times. 
But Lubbock sold him to the Dallas Eagles in 1951, and then they sold him to Portland, Oregon, with the Philly of the Cubs in 57, and in 58 uh, sold to the St. Louis Cardinals, and then finished up his AAA career in Houston in 1959. But one of the things that Wilson and I talked about as he would review his career was his bad timing. When Wilson was playing ball, there were only 17, 16 major league Cubs clubs. There were only 400 major league baseball players in the world at that time. Now think about this. There's 400 roster spots. More than half of those are going to be filled by pitchers. Every team's going to carry 12 to 13 pitchers of the 25. And then most everybody else is going to carry two catchers. So that means in all of Major League Baseball, there are only 160 to 170 rate roster places for position players in all of baseball. And we'll see happen to fall into that kind of time. And it was always better to be drafted than to be discovered. But when you look back over Wilsey's career, six years at AAA batting 270, why, if he played today, he'd be snatched up in a heartbeat into the major leagues. His minor league career stands out with major league statistics. And all along the way, Mary and these two girls following along behind, going from ballpark to ballpark, and numerous times, we'll see, would say, they sacrificed a lot for me. And it was Jesus who said, have you not read that the one who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason, shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they're no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. The highlight of Wilsey's baseball career came in 1953 when the Dallas Eagles won the Dixie League, which is the World Series of Minor League Baseball. They, they played Nashville. The second highlight of Wilsey's career, according to the video they made with Mag Ann, was Wilsey Moore Day at the Dallas Eagles Baseball Park in Dallas. Now, Mag Ann remembers it as Wilsey Moore Day. Wilsey remembers it as Milshu Day. Gil Lamb and other gentlemen in this community went up and down the streets collecting money to have meal shoe day at the Dallas Eagles ballpark, and they took the MIHS band in the summer to march at the ballpark and form an M on the outfield at Wilsey Moore Day. And he said, I had it all planned. I was going to thank my wife and my sweet little girls and my family for coming and all the people from Milshu who came and the band. And he said, I was up there in the press box and Gil Lamb was interviewing me and we got twisted up and I spoke into the back of the microphone. And he said, when we finished, Gil Lamb said, nobody heard you say a word. And he said, I, I had it all planned and I talked in the wrong end of the microphone. But that event was also held in support of a little girl from Milshu who was in the hospital with polio at the time. But when it was all said and done, and Gil Lamb paid all the bills, there was $50 left. So they gave Mary a gift certificate to Neiman Marcus with the $50 left. And, um, and Wilsey made a comment in the video, she did not spend it on him. Wilsey retired in 1959. He came back to Milshu, worked at the compress and assistant manager of the gin. Started family farming for the family farm in 1968. Most of us in this room today, we didn't know him as a ball player. We knew him as a farmer, a member of this community, a member of this church. He and Mary had season tickets at the Mules game for 65 years. They would walk out their back gate across the practice field into the stadium, sit in the same seats for 65 years. Now, they generally left right after halftime when the band marched. Then later, the school enclosed the, through the grounds, and they put a fence between them and the football stadium, so they had to drive around and park near the gate, sat in the same seats, and they generally left just after halftime. 
it turns out Mary wasn't all that crazy about football. (laughs) And it also turns out Mary wasn't all that crazy about baseball. (laughs) She said, I was not like a lot of baseball wives. When we visited Yankee Stadium, it was just another big stadium and another game. The pleasure was watching Wilson. Jesus said, Have you not read that the one who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So there are no longer two but one. Therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. Wilsey loved his daughters and he loved his grandkids, his granddaughters, his one grandson. He said to his daughters and to his granddaughters, uh, be pretty. They're not sure what they were supposed to do with that, but that was his slogan. Except when he saw Sherry and he said, well, here comes trouble. When these girls were little, they had the advantage of playing baseball on the sandlot with professional equipment. Real gloves. Not gloves from TJ and Y and Gibson's. Real gloves. Sherry was always the first baseman because she had a baseball glove that said professional on it. <laughs> you know, for decades, uh, Wilson and Mary sat in the center of this, con- this sanctuary right in front of the TV there in the remote camera. Sunday after Sunday, always in that spot. Before the services, we talked weather, kids, and baseball. And one of the privileges of knowing these two is watching them take care of one another. From retiring from farming and retiring from the bank, I've seen them in the hospital, I've seen them in rehab centers, I've seen them nursing one another back to health. Now, the notoriety of Wilsey's life is, is baseball, but the substance of his life is his faith in Jesus Christ and his love for Mary. Sherry said, Mama was his North Star, more important than anything else, and even baseball. You know, often say that one of the advantages of a church like ours is the intergenerational mix. Children and senior adults gather to worship and to serve. It is an example of faithfulness for young people to see. I mean, you have a church full of 25 years old. There's not a lot of longevity in the room. But people like Wilson and Mary, teenagers and children, see a couple that have been married 60 and 65 years. They hear stories of hard times and perseverance. They hear stories of loyalty and grace. And this couple's given that kind of testimony and that kind of witness in this church and this community. Love for one another. And Jesus said, Have you not read? That the one who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they're no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Mary, may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord bless We'll see some memory among us. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful for this sweet couple and the example of love and marriage and solidarity that they have given to us. Father, we'll see enjoyed uh, extraordinary talents not given to many. But with those talents, he and Mary demonstrated their love for one another, their love for their children, their love for this town and for this church. Father, we thank you for both of them. And Lord, I ask that you bless Mary and ask, Lord, that you help us to remember and to cherish the memories we have with Wilsey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
you stand, please? making their way to the fellowship hall and if you have a chance and your time allows to visit with them they'd love to receive you at this time may god bless you and thank you for being with us